Ione Butler. I'm an actress, host, voiceover artist, and I'm the founder of a platform called Uplifting Content. I just want to say thank you to everyone for joining me today. Thank you to Orly and the organization for putting on this beautiful event. I think a kindness week is incredibly necessary and it's an honor to be here with you. Today I'd like to talk about being kind to yourself the importance of being kind to yourself, why we need to do it, and the ways in which we can be kind to ourselves. So a bit about me. Growing up, I have uh, dealt with depression on and off throughout my life. It's something that kind of comes and goes in waves. And in my early 20s, I started getting into personal development. And it was a big turning point in my life because for the first time, I realized the way in which I was talking to myself the voices in my head, the thoughts I was having, the things that I was saying. And I quickly realized that that talk, that voice in my head was causing a huge amount of my suffering, anxiety and depression. Now to give you an idea of some of the, the thoughts that were going around in my head, um, you're ugly, you're a failure, no one's ever gonna love you, or you're never gonna amount to anything in life. It's basically, you suck, I hate myself. That was kind of like a mantra that I had running around in my head for many years. And it was through reading a series of books. Um, one in particular was The Power of Now by Eckhart Tolle, which I highly recommend all the time to everybody. But it was reading that book that was the first time that I was able to identify that the thoughts that I was thinking were separate from who I am. The thoughts that I was, that I was thinking uh, I could control, and it was the thoughts that I was thinking that were having this negative effect on my emotional well-being. And when I was aware of that, when I could start to observe the thoughts and change them, that's when I started to um, feel so much better in myself and help to overcome these depressive states, which could sometimes be incredibly crippling. You know, I wouldn't be able to get out of bed, I wouldn't want to go to work. When you have a voice that's telling you that you're awful, that you suck, that you're worthless, it becomes very difficult to do anything. And so the first way in which I would like you to consider being kind to yourself is the ways in which you talk to yourself, the things that you say. And it's a habitual thing. I had spent years telling myself all these horrible things. And so it took a little while to, to, to turn that around, to change that negative self-talk. Um, for example, whenever I would catch myself using the mantra, it was literally a mantra, I hate myself, I hate myself. And so what I got into the habit of doing was catching that. And whenever I said the I hate myself, replace it with I love myself. Because here's the thing. If you can make a habit of beating yourself up and tearing yourself down and pulling yourself apart, you can make it a habit to be kind to yourself, to be loving to yourself, to be compassionate to yourself. So uh, that's the first and probably the most powerful way in which we can be kind to yourself. And it's miraculous how quickly your mood will change. There's another book that I really like called uh, Ask and It Is Given. And what they talk about in that book is understanding the thoughts that we're having affect our feelings. So when you have a thought that is making you feel awful, that thought is not in alignment with your higher self. But when you have a thought that is in alignment with who you are, with your higher self, you feel good about it. So an easy way to gauge whether or not your thoughts are in the right place is to check in with how you feel. If you feel horrendous, the chances are the thoughts are not kind, they're not good, they're not helpful. And if you're feeling good, the chances are that the thoughts that you're thinking are in alignment with your higher self. So the next way to be kind to yourself is to really listen to yourself. Listen to your body, start to, um, connect to your body rather than just be all up in your head. If you need a rest, if you need to sleep, if you're exhausted, take a break, get some rest, get some sleep. You can be kind to yourself by 
listening to your body and giving it what it needs, especially when it comes to rest. And another way of being kind to yourself and your body and your mind and your spirit is taking a break from time to time. You know, turning off your devices, if it's a very small break, just turning off your devices and disconnecting from everything. If you're a bit overwhelmed with all of the stimulus, there's a lot that's being talked about and spread and happening, it's, it's a bit much. So give yourself a break. That's a way of practicing kindness. Another way is taking yourself away on a trip or a vacation. Um, it's a bit difficult right now in the time of Corona, but even just being out in nature can be incredibly healing. You know, where can you go that's on your doorstep or a town away or a county that you can be out in nature, even just for the day, just to, to be with yourself or loved ones and connect with nature. Be kind to yourself by taking a break. Another way of being kind to your body is by exercising. Uh, we need to exercise. We don't move very much. We don't move as much as we were originally designed to move. So take yourself out for a walk. And find a fun routine on YouTube or with a, with a yoga studio or a fitness class that you enjoy doing and move your body on a daily basis. I'd interviewed somebody from my podcast um, a little while ago who suggested it's important to get your heart rate going. So, you know, try and move even if it's for 10 minutes so that you can get your heart rate going um, and that's, that would be good for you, beneficial for your body. Another way of being kind to your body is by being mindful of what you're eating. Are you eating fresh, healthy, whole, nutritious foods or are you eating a lot of packaged or junk foods? A phrase that's stuck in my mind for a long time is you can't out-exercise a bad diet. And so if you want to feel better, a great way of doing it is starting from within and feeding your body food that fuels it in a clean and healthy way. And also being mindful of how much you're eating. Feeding yourself enough to sa satiate yourself and to function well, but not overeating so that it has a negative impact on your health and on your well-being. Be kind to your body by exercising and eating healthfully. Lastly, be kind to yourself by what you're consuming. You might have heard the line, you are what you eat, but I like to say you are what you consume because it's just more than what you eat. You can be kind to yourself by what you're putting into your body, what you are putting into your mind, what you are watching, what you are hearing, what products you are putting onto your skin that's being absorbed into your bloodstream. Everything that we consume um, is having an impact on our physical and mental well-being. I founded a platform called Uplifting Content in 2016 and the idea behind it was to provide an online space where people could go to be uplifted, to find videos and articles and stories from people that reminds them of the good in humanity, that makes them feel good, that offers some fantastic advice. And the reason that I started the platform was because when I was feeling low and depressed, oftentimes it would be triggered by the things that were happening around me. I would be um, deeply upset hearing about conflicts in other parts of the world or corruption in, in politics. And it really upset me deeply. And so I wanted to find content that could help lift me out of that bad place. And it was quite difficult to find information like that. And that's why I started Uplifting Content. We're on Facebook, we're on social media, there's a website. And I recently released my first book, Uplifting Stories. The book is a collection of some of the most inspiring people that you can imagine. People who have overcome adversity, who are doing things for others, running charities and organizations who are taking a stand for what they believe in, making real positive change for themselves and their communities, people who are pursuing their passions and purpose and their dreams. And the reason that I created this book was to offer an alternative. For, uh, there's, like I mentioned earlier, there's a lot of stressful and divisive and fear-mongering news and uh, media that is circulating right now. And um, I think a good way to be kind to yourself is to take a step back from all of that, 
turn it off from time to time and feed your subconscious and your mind and your heart with beautiful stories about amazing people, kind people, honest people, good people, compassionate people. So thank you for watching this talk. I hope that you've enjoyed it. I hope that this reminds you to practice kindness to yourself um, in the way that you speak to yourself, in the way that you treat yourself. And um, I think that when we're kind and loving to ourselves, we're even more kind and loving to others. Take care, lots of love. Thank you for watching. Bye.